Let's bring in veteran tech watcher. Joining us now is Gene Munster, Loop Ventures founder and managing partner. Gene, good morning to you. Good morning, Melissa. Uh, a lot of these Chinese shares listed in the United States have traded at a discount because of this fear. We've seen it with Alibaba and the shutdown of the Ant Financial IPO. How much longer do you think, is this just going to be a permanent cloud over this entire group? It is. And as I contemplated the headlines in the news today, there was a sense of deja vu that I had. I've been uh, uh, closely watching and following, covering these Chinese companies since around 2007, companies like Baidu, uh, JD. And this is nothing new. And I think that it is going to continue to answer your question, this cloud over these stocks. And if I can take us back to 2010, the big question was around the ADR structure that in U.S. investors and global investors actually hold. There was this uh, dynamic that kept investors up at night, that they would wake up in the morning and that their equity holdings within these companies would simply be revoked from Chinese leadership. That has not happened. But things have changed over the past decade. And there, while well, I'm not uh, uh, a political, uh, take political positions, I do sense greater tension between the countries. And I believe that that's going to continue. And this gets back to your question is, when does this end? And the simple answer is it doesn't. I think that any investor that is participating in these uh, Chinese companies should just uh, take this as uh, these difficult days. For those that believe more strongly, these are opportunities, if you think about DD down 20%, mm -hmm. to own these companies uh, over the long haul. How do you, though, on a fundamental basis, how do you work out the discount evaluation that these companies should have, whether it be a DD or an Alibaba or a JD, when they are under the scrutiny of the, of the, of the Beijing regulators? Well, you start with the market opportunity. In China, there's 1.4 billion people. The, as per point of perspective, the U.S. has 330 billion, so it's just over 4x the number of people. And so when you think about a valuation difference at any of these companies, I think you need to look at uh, the addressable market. Uh, if we just, let's just take DD, for example, it'll probably open up somewhere around 55 or 60 billion in market cap. Uh, maybe the best comp is Lyft, uh, that really is exclusive to the US, DD effectively exclusive to China, that has called a 20 plus billion dollar market cap. And you can look at the addressable market, the differences between the population, the population growth. So there is an exercise that you can do. What I would uh, caution investors is that when Chinese companies talk about opportunities outside of the U.S., to be skeptical of that. Uh, obviously, TikTok is a company that has had tremendous success outside of China. But I've uh, delivered or, or worked firsthand with Baidu when they wanted to expand outside to Japan or to Latin America, to Russia. That never happened. And so I think as investors contemplate what this, uh, you know, what the right valuation is, you need to adjust that these companies aren't going to be operating outside. There is uh, good news for some of these investors, of course, is that uh, the silver lining on investing in companies that can't expand outside of China is that they have uh, state-sponsored monopolies in many cases. It is the opposite of what we're experiencing with the antitrust right. movement in the U.S. Although once upon a time, that was a reason to be invested in this, thinking that they were state champions and they had an effective monopoly. But <laughs> that hasn't really panned out, at least in, in recent months, as we've seen Beijing crack down. Gene, I'm wondering if you, if you think about the flip side to this, and, and that is if the Chinese government is really serious about containing data and being control, in control of, of the data of the country, that really gives China the leg up on AI because of all that data. It is. And Eunice uh, touched on this at the, at the back end of her piece, too. And I think that really is the, uh, the pressure point, the, the critical factor here. It probably reads uh, more like a, a, an action movie than uh, tech headlines. But I think that that is, in fact, uh, the, one of the biggest plays here. I'm a believer that artificial intelligence will fundamentally change how uh, humans live. And I think that there is a race. I think that the race that uh, I think this plays into what's going on with 5G and data and networks, it's all related. And so, uh, yes, I think that is part of these tensions. Uh, when Eunice talked about, you know, Beijing wanting more control of data and the, the concern that U.S. would somehow get uh, access to that, keep in mind that these companies have been listed, many companies have been listed in the U.S. for a long time. So that, that, that risk had been out there. But it feels different today because of the AI, because we're starting to 
get into a data gathering uh, mode for these governments. And I, I suspect that this is going to be this very invisible political front between the two uh, giants in the future. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.